Hello friends, welcome back to the Craft Castle. Let's make some custom shoes. About six months ago, I made these um, HTV custom fairies for Halloween. Look it, love it. Halloween and there's glow in the dark ghosts on there. But ever since I made these, my son has been begging me for a custom pair of shoes. Begging, weekly. So I'm finally here, I'm finally making them. Um, I was trying, the reason why it took me so long for me to get to his custom pair is I've been trying to convince him to do a little bit more of a simple and basic theme. He does not want it. This kid, if he knows, he believes in his mama, he knows that I can do it. So, what he has requested is black bands with the entire front right here to be a Pac-Man video game theme. It's going to be hard, but it's going to look amazing when it's done. First and foremost, you have to, when you're doing designs, especially with a whole shoe right here, you have to get a template. Now, I scoured the internet, I have tried to find a template, and you could not find a template. In Design Space, in Cricut Design Space, if you were doing a pair of Converse, they do have a canvas that already has a Converse shoe in it, and like the tongue or the sides, they already have one there for you, but they do not have a pair of Vans and nowhere else on the internet has the template for the bands. So I'm going to show you how to make my own template. It is not cute, but it is easy and it is functional. And then how to put it into design space. And then I'll show you how I put the HTV on these shoes. They are going to look amazing. All right, let's get started. First, what you want to do is just take a napkin, a towel or anything else, a sock maybe, and just shove it down into your shoe. You want to make sure that when you push on it, it will not give or bend because you're going to want this template to be perfect. Um, once you have it all shoved in there, all you're going to need for this part of the project is a plain piece of paper or any paper and a pen. Kind of trim this down, line it up to where the shoe is at the very top right here. And since this is a bigger piece of paper, It'll be easier to manage if you just trim off any excess. I'm going to put it towards me. Okay. Now all you're going to want to do is just take your piece of paper and your pen and kind of use the rubber sole as the guide. I mean, it is not... It'd probably be easier if I had a pencil, but a pen will work too. You kind of just want to trace the outline of the shoe. Line is going to look a little messed up and drunk. That is okay. If you mess up once, you can redo this part since it only is just paper and pen. Now what you want to do is take your scissors and just cut out your template. Here's the cutout template. Now, to verify that you did this correct, just line this back up with your shoe. It seems to be okay on this side, but I really struggled with this side. So what I'm gonna do is, is I'm gonna redo my template and make sure that it's really tight around this seam right here. See, this one's perfect though. It's really tight with that. And then even up at the top where the tongue is and then down around the sole of the shoe, it is all nice. That's what I want to do with this side. So I'm gonna redo this. I struggled hard to do mine, so I had my daughter do mine for me. Uh, and she just used a piece of lined paper. And now when we hold this up to this, You can tell it's tight right here up to the seam all the way around the shoe sole and then also right here it's all tight around the entire thing okay now what you're going to want to do is take make sure and flatten this out as, as best as possible and take a picture of your design it is best if you use a darker um a darker background for this because when you trace it in design space, if it was white on white, it wouldn't it it would not 
work, your trace will not work. So what you're going to want to do is just take your phone and take a picture of your design. There it is right there, and I'm going to send it to my computer behind me. That's it. Now what you want to do is open up any window in Design Space. You can already tell that I am already in my Pac-Man custom shoes, and I have already done my design. This took me hours, but I know the end result is going to look phenomenal. Okay, so what you're going to want to do is just press this upload button that's right here, and then upload image, and find where you sent your file. Just press. Just put it in there. It might take a minute depending on how big your file size is. Why mine says, wow, what a large image. Okay, and then press complex and press continue. You can tell I am printing something cool on my Glowforge right now. Okay, now all you're gonna wanna do is press remove background. This new feature that Cricut came out is amazing. I love it. Okay. You can tell that everything is removed around my template besides some like random speckles here and there. That is fine. Press that erase button and I'm going to make my eraser size big because look how small it is. So I'm going to make it big and just take your eraser tool and just kind of erase what you don't want. Do not erase anything on your template because your template is what you need here. That's what we're looking for. Over here at the top right says preview cut. Just click that real quick. And make sure that there's no other little speckles. There's not, there's a speckle right here. And I think that's it. It's fine if you miss a couple because we'll fix that later if it is, ha if, it, it, if there's something there. Okay, then all you're gonna wanna do is just apply and continue. We are gonna take this and make it a, oh, you can tell right here that there is a small little speckle. I'll keep it there just so I can show you how to get rid of that. But we, um, what I was saying is, is that you're going to want to make this a cut image because we don't want to print and cut this image at all. If you wanted to print and cut, you could do this one, but we don't want that. So we're going to go to cut image and just press upload. It's going to go back to this original, your original screen. You can tell I've been working on my Pac-Man stuff here and just click the one that you, um, that you just uploaded and press add to canvas. I'll make that bigger. Okay, whoa, it was, it just is gigantic. Okay, we're gonna make this smaller. Now, take your shoe. It, now, this is going to depend on what shoes you are using, right? So like this right here is a size four and a half men. Um, obviously, if you have a nine men, the, sh the template of your shoe is going to be different. So this needs to be per your shoe that you're doing. And I always like to use fabric, uh, like a fabric tape to when I'm measuring things that kind of move a little bit. So it kind of gives it a little bit of movement versus like one of those hard rulers. All you're going to want to do is, is measure the top of your, the top of your toe right here to the very edge of your seam, right there. This is about five and a half inches for mine. So I'm going to make my height 5.5 inches. Now, that little speckle that's right here, if you had one of those, that's fine. All you're gonna wanna do is go over here to the bottom right and press contour and delete any of the speckles you don't want. Or you can just press hide all contours. And there you go, that is it. Okay, when it comes to shoes, you have a left and a right. Um, this right here, we did the left shoe. I <laughs> think about that. We did the left shoe. So when you're designing, you're gonna want to duplicate your template and always flip it. If you're designing two different things. So if like, if the next shoes I think that the little guy was wanting was Toy Story. I know. So one's going to be Woody and one's going to be Buzz. And so I'm going to be designing two different shoes. So you're always going to want to have like a left and a right template. Um, I And that's how you're going to want to do it. 
for these particular shoes, I only designed one shoe, um, one shoe design, which is perfect. And all I'm going to do now, wherever that template went. Okay. All I'm going to do now is I already have my finished design. It's already welded together, sliced together. It looks really good. This is how I'm going to cut it. I am going to select everything that's in my left shoe. I'm going to duplicate it. And then I'm going to go up here to flip and flip horizontal. So now I have a left and right shoe and it is the same on both things. Now, again, if you're doing a design, a, a shoe set that has two different designs, you're going to want to do it this way instead. But since I'm doing the same design on both shoes, it doesn't matter. The placement of my Pac-Man and Ghosts are going to change on either shoe, which is why they're not attached and they're just right here in random spots. But the lines and the dots and everything else like that are going to be on here, um, are going to be the same. Now, when you go into Make It, remember, whenever you are doing HTV, remember to flip. and Or flip, mirror, horizontal, vertical, or horizontal. Um, and all you do is you go into Mirror, right? Go into the cut, and right here it says Mirror, and make that, flip that. And then you're going to want to do that for every single, um, every single map. You can tell some of these are going to be a lot, like, they're going to be fine details. I'm telling you. It was, this was a very complicated design that he gave me. Um, there you go. And then this one right here, we don't need these. You don't need to cut these at all. So you could, you could have deleted it. I forgot. Instead of going back and having to redo all the mirroring, go over here at these top right dots and just pre press hide selected. And then do the same for that because we don't need to cut those. All we need to cut is our design. Now all you need to do is cut your design and I'll see you back in a minute when I have all of mine cut. Okay, so I am cutting some um, Glow in the Dark HTV and it is a thicker HTV and every single time that I cut a thicker HTV all before I eject the map from my machine, I always just take my little weeding tool and I just take the little corner of where I know there should be um, some cutouts. And if it's not weeding, there should be something that's like right here. And if it's not coming up, then I just push this down flat. Okay, I'm going to push this flat. And then I'm going to press the cut button again do not press the eject button if it didn't cut press the cut button again and it will suck it back up now that you have all of your pieces cut out what I always like to do is do a dry fit is what I like to call dry fit so what you're going to do is, is you're going to always start with the bottom layer at the bottom which is going to be these two and then you're going to want to work from the top. So the bottom layer, and then the next one. And you're just going to want to dry fit them together to make sure that everything is going to be lined up perfectly when you go to place it on there. Okay, then these things, whoops. right here like the little eyeballs and such like that because they're so small oh. see how they're so teeny and tiny i'm going to leave them as thick pieces um just because then i know where they're at if i start cutting them now it's going to start getting really crazy but you can tell that when i start layering them on there that they're all going to line up perfectly and then these two, it looks really good. Okay, so then you're just going to want to start with one shoe. Just start working on one shoe. It is, looks like it's going to be, where is my template? Here's my template. Okay, so this is going to be the right shoe. So I'm going to move this over because that's for the other shoe. I'm working on the left shoe right now. 
So I am going to take up my layers that are all layered on there. <clears throat> and then I am just going to, again, dry fit just to make sure that everything should lay down the way it's supposed to, that I think that's where I'm going to like it. Then what you want to do is take off all the layers besides the very bottom layer. Now, clearly I only have two layers, so that was a lot easier. I have done projects where it's multiple layers, so it is a little bit difficult, but you always want to start with the very bottom layer and work your way up. So whatever you want on the bottom is what you're going to want to do first. And make sure and line these up just to make sure. See how, look. Look around, make sure it's all lined up, and you know that when you iron this on there, that it is going to fit like a glove, which it's going to. It looks really good from all angles. Okay, so now let me go get my heat press heated up, and then I will show you how to do the rest. So I have one shoe finished. Look at that. How stinking cute. All these little dots are glow in the dark. HTV. Love it. You can tell that there's a perfect wrap around everywhere. Love it. So this is going to be our reference. I'm going to put this over here. These are my small little baby pieces. Make sure you're starting off with a very clean um, desk because you don't want any mess ups. Here I'm going to stick my napkin back in to the hole. Make sure you get all the way down into the toe because you want to be able to apply pressure. And then because we have a little bit flopping around right here, I just have a spare t-shirt uh, that's in my office and I am just going to shove it into the shoe. So now everything will not flop around. Okay, for this project, you are gonna need a small little press. This thing is no bigger than the palm of my hand. It is so teeny, but it will be able to go around all the little curvatures um, and it's a little bit more usable and friendly for smaller surfaces. I do not suggest doing a heat press or a um, easy press for this. It has to be one of the small ones. Rolling up my sleeves. We are going to start off with the bottom layer, which is the blue. We're gonna start off with the bottom. What I found out that is the easiest is this, we already know is the template. Everything around the outside is our template. If you try and push this down like this, it's really hard and you don't get an even press everywhere. So what I'm doing is I'm just going to take my scissors and I am going to trim around my design. I cannot talk and cut at the same time. Sorry, y'all. Okay, trim around my design. Make sure and keep them in the right spots that you cut them just so you don't get confused. Okay, so I'm going to have all these little sections. I am going to start with the middle portion, the top middle, and work my way out. So I'm going to line this up. And see how there's like, it doesn't want to lay down flat. It would be harder if you had a bigger sheet. Um, it is not that big of a deal now that it is smaller because we're just going to take this heat press and kind of slide it. What you want to do is do, you don't want to slide around a lot. You just want to push it down. This uh, HTV that I'm using, it only takes seconds for it to adhere onto your substrate, which is great at doing something like this because you don't want too much heat because we're doing a whole lot of layers. All right, and then just going in and making sure that everything is tacked down. Okay, slowly peel your carrier sheet. This little corner got messed up, which is fine. I will put a ghost. So because I'm going to add more embellishments to it, if your corner gets messed up like right here, that's how mine did too, don't worry about it because I'll probably just put one of the ghosts, put one of these ghosts right there and you'll never know I messed up. Okay, going to the next side and lining it up.
It's okay if you trim just a little bit that you need off if it's easier to work with. And then doing the same thing. You can tell that there is just, it's coming up just a little bit. All, do, all I'm going to do is, is take my little heat press and just kind of press it down. You don't need a whole lot of pressing or heat. You just need to tack it down in there. All right, we have the entire blue portion done. Same thing with the little dots that I'm doing is I'm going to just cut smaller sections Instead of cutting a whole bunch because we have a whole lot of small little dots, I'm just going to start working my way around cutting smaller areas. The HTV that I'm using, the glow, oh, hot, the glow in the dark stuff takes a little bit more pressure than the um, turbo does, but not a whole lot. Pressure and time. So that's why we want to work in even smaller bits of uh, square space, just because you want to make sure that you get really good, even pressure for that glow in the dark. And if you start to peel up and like this, this dot right here is coming up with it, just stop and press again. Okay, there we go. There is a little bit of um, those glow-in-the-dark dots on the blue. You don't want that. So I'm just going to take, before it um, cures onto the substrate, I'm just going to take and peel those dots off. There we go. And now it's like I never messed up. All right, so we are done with the dots and the lines. I know it doesn't look like a whole lot, but it is looking good. Um, slide everything that you don't need away. Now I need to put that little pink thing. You need to find that and trim it out. Lay it on top of your where it needs to go and just kind of do a quick zap. Quick zap. There it is. Now the funnest part about this is taking all your little bits of ghosts in Pac-Man, and I am going to now hide the imperfections that I see. So that way you won't be able to see them when you're wearing them. Okay, so kind of place them in spots where you, just random, I just have them in random spots. Once you like where you, where you want to place them, I think this little area is a little bit worse. Just do a quick press, just like we did for the pink. And then we got the eyeballs, that's why I keep them all not cut out is so I'm going to go in and I'm going to trim off the two eyeballs that I need and I'm going to place them on the ghosts. This The reason why I do it this way is because these are small pieces and you don't want to lose them. Same thing as the colors, just going in and doing a quick zap. Okay, there's all that. All right, now we have one final step. We have some little eyeballs. These little guys, you can hardly see them. Details matter to me, so I am going to press the little eyeballs. I know they are so small, but you know what? Right now they look just like white 
things on their faces, but once you add the smallest little detail of the pupils of their eyes, then all of a sudden they become, see how there is pupils there and none here? They almost look just like white blobs there and eyeballs here. So for me, details matter. There we go, there we have it, another shoe. Here they are together. There we go. Okay, so before you go and gift this to anybody, what you want to do is just take a small, like this is just parchment paper, and go back in and kind of press all of your heat, oops, ouch. Press all of your things down just to make sure you have a good press on everything and nothing's going to come off or get torn off or picked off or anything else. Um, also, if you need to wash these, wait at least 24 hours before putting them in the wash. You want the HTV um, adhesive to be fully cured before getting them wet or washing them or anything like that. But otherwise that you have now have some custom shoes. All right, y'all, I will see you later.